You know, I've been a standing here a long time and watched on the average of 6,000 cars go by each day. For the most part, the people in those cars don't have any idea of what happened here years ago. You see, this here city is Montpelier, Idaho, and the Oregon Trail went right here where I'm standing. It'd be a shame to forget about all that history and all the people who worked so hard and sacrificed so much to get across this continent. Why, right here would be an ideal place for a museum the way I see it. Take a look at this here map. The Oregon Trail stretched from Independence, Missouri to Oregon City, Oregon, a total distance of about 2,000 miles. Traveling 20 miles or less a day, the journey would take from four to six months. The Oregon Trail stretched across southern Idaho for almost 400 miles. After leaving South Pass on the Continental Divide, the trail entered present-day Idaho just west of the community of Border Junction, Wyoming. Bear Lake County is what they call the area today. Here's why Montpelier is such an ideal place for the National Oregon Trail Museum. Montpelier is located smack dab at the intersection of U.S. Highways 89 and 30. This here corner that I'm standing on is at that intersection. Like I said before, around 6,000 vehicles pass this corner each day with a major summer increase. US 30 parallels the Oregon Trail for miles. US 89 connects all of the national parks between the Grand Canyon and Glacier. This includes some of the most beautiful scenic areas in the world, like Grand Teton National Park and Yellowstone National Park. Why the south entrance of Yellowstone Park handles about 28% of the visitors, the west entrance, for which US 30 serves as a connecting road, handles 34% of the visitors. Just as folks like to take the time to stop and see the critters, they say that 50% of these travelers to Yellowstone take the time to stop at museums and historical sites. Cute little feller, isn't he? Oh, and, and don't forget Bear Lake with its public beaches, campgrounds, private lodging, and other facilities, all which receive nearly one-half million visitor days each season. Why, you couldn't pick a better place for a museum, which folks will be able to use easily, right on their way to wherever they're going. The plot of land dedicated for the museum is situated on the corner of an existing park. The area is landscaped and has a paved parking lot. There is a playground and sheltered picnic area at the location. And for those with travel trailers and motor homes, there's even a dump station available on site. You see, all these things are already in place and don't need to be financed. We simply need the building. So here's what we're thinking about. The museum would be a 20,000 square foot building with two levels. Its presentation would include an outdoor area displaying larger artifacts. In the lobby of the entranceway, there'd be an information counter to assist travelers with local and regional data. The facility would be shared by the U.S. Forest Service. The presence of such a ranger headquarters would considerably help with the maintenance and the operations of the building. The inside would have old dioramas, artifacts, artistic and photographic presentations, and of course even hands-on displays, like this here wagon. You know, one of the things I really like is this multimedia center over here in the corner. You know, this high-tech stuff just does amazing things. Here the visitor can obtain a larger perspective of the immensity of the adventure. Why, just by sitting on this here computer, they'll be able to visit sites all along the Oregon Trail, see how people lived and traveled, sense the hardships and problems that the journey produced. The idea is to assure that the total impact is conveyed. It won't be limited to local events, 
This should whet the tourist's appetite for more Oregon Trail experiences and information. For example, look here. This is Thomas Fork Crossing, about two miles west of the present Idaho-Wyoming border. Large Indian villages once were found in this valley. The area attracted trade and ventures due to the abundance of water, grass, and wood. And here's Big Hill, five miles west of the Thomas Fork. Many immigrants thought that this was the steepest and longest hill yet encountered. Well, it's a shame. There's not much left of Smith's trading post. In 1848, Thomas L., they call him Peg Leg Smith, established a trading post right there along the Bear River. There's plenty of miles of Oregon Trail which still exists locally, and the visitors can observe and walk along to experience the feel of the trail. You know, there's a lot of support for the museum and the history of the Oregon Trail in the local community. The Bear Lake Rendezvous, a celebration of the Oregon Trail and the flavor of the Old West, is an example of their enthusiasm. The Rendezvous is a summer pageant put on by the people of the valley and held right on the Oregon Trail. Yes, sir. All this attention to the Oregon Trail goes right along with 1993 being its 150th anniversary. The problem is, you see, most tourists will not start at either end of the Oregon Trail. However, you'll find a lot of people around here. And because of the high visibility of this location, the museum will raise awareness of the Oregon Trail. But not only that, this facility provides a unique opportunity for outreach educational programs utilizing the Institute format. Yep, this here is a special place to me. The 1840s saw the beginning of this new frontier. In the 60-odd years of use of the Oregon Trail, thousands headed west, first for fur, and then as missionaries, and finally for land. It represented a adventure, a new life, opportunity, even a challenge. Thousands of Americans sold their possessions, gathered up their family, purchased a wagon, oxen, horses, a gun, provisions, and headed for Independence, Missouri to begin the greatest adventure and challenge in their entire life. They passed by here, the Clover Creek Grazing Area, the presentation of the pioneer experience will educate visitors about the living, breathing reality that was the Oregon Trail. The National Oregon Trail Museum will allow visitors to relive an event that altered the national geography and personality. Think about it. Hope to see you soon.